Hello and welcome to another day of the Global Little War Game League 2024 cast. Today, we're going to be uh, looking at uh, some Alpha League games. But before that, just a quick look at the map pool once again for, I don't know, is this the fifth time? I don't know. Probably even more than that. But it is once again the ranked map pool with the addition of Thieves Isle. Uh, the Alpha League so far is looking like this. So we have Weird Rat and Avocado Lord through to the semifinals. Uh, unfortunately, Madurk and Bisharm are eliminated. Uh, we'll figure out who's going to join Weedra and Avocado Lord in the semifinals. Uh, with today's semi quarterfinals, it's going to be Consciously Eating versus Matthew N. And uh, these are, this is probably going to be some really entertaining matches. Consciously Eating, obviously, is someone who is very entertaining to watch. Lots of uh, cute proxy plays, uh, innovative builds and all that stuff so uh, we'll see if Matthew N has a plan in store for that uh, on paper Matthew N would probably be the favorite but you never know um, let's just hop straight into it the first I don't have the bands unfortunately um, it seems like they're not telling me all the bands for uh, the quarterfinals so far but that's okay we're just gonna hop right into it the first game is gonna be on Sylvan Charm and let's take a look spawning in the top left hand side of the map it is gonna be Consciously eating. I wonder what he's eating today. And spawning in the bottom right hand side of the map. Sending out a very quick worker. It's Matthew N. Alright, so in my mind, obviously, consciously eating is probably more likely to do a little bit of proxying and a little bit of cheeky cheeky play, but it looks like in this game, uh, Matthew N going to start off with the worker being sent across the map. I wonder what this is going to be for. Uh, one of the interesting things about this map is that you can uh, flash across this gap over here with a raider, but looks like this is just going to be a scout, so uh, that's going to be totally fine with me. Consciously eating, not putting down a house just yet. So he looks like he's going to look to do a castle first, if I'm not mistaken. And I think that's a pretty good idea, especially if you're known to be a bit more of a cheeky, cheesy player. Going to go for a little bit of a curveball in this game one. Uh, but it looks like with this Worger Scout, that is quickly going to be scouted. So that's going to be pretty nice. We have a Rax on the way over here from Matthew. And we have a Worker going down that's going to be... Uh, building the castle. Uh, Matthew N's worker is going to come in and scout that there is nothing. No buildings other than that starting castle, that uh, initial castle first for Consciously Eating going to start right now. And I think the worker of Matthew N is going to scout that relatively quickly as it leaves the base of Consciously Eating. So uh, that's going to be an excellent scout out of Matthew N. Uh, yeah, so this is going to be uh, Matthew N with all the information that he needs. is going to scout this. He's going to try to block this house a little bit, but uh, consciously eating, able to get it down in time. And if you're Matthew N, you're probably feeling pretty good. Uh, you know that there's nothing uh, crazy going on. You know that uh, you're going to be happy to get in, go into a macro game here uh, versus consciously eating. Uh, the first raider on the way. All right, so this map, Sylvan Charm, is uh, a pretty good map for Beast in the sense that uh, you can easily take like a fourth base and a fifth base away on different sides of the map and cause your opponent to try to, you know, if they want to harass that fourth or fifth base, it's kind of uh, separated away from the rest of your infrastructure, and therefore it's a lot harder for uh, for you to do some damage Uh in rapid succession so maybe you'll get a base but um, that to go to that next base it's a lot harder also it's pretty easy to get surrounds on this map uh, maybe not super super easy but it's definitely uh, not the most difficult thing in the world it is going to be that fe2 den interestingly enough consciously eating going to stop at 10 workers a piece to, to put down his uh first two wol uh, wolves dens Generally, the accepted, quote-unquote, accepted standard is 11-11. Uh, you can get away with 11-12 or 12-12, depending on uh, the map rush distance. I generally prefer to do 11-12 myself because uh, I just think it flows a little bit better macro-wise. But consciously, eating going to play on the safer side, going to go for a 10-10, which means that he will have uh, wolves out in time for this raider, more or less. Um... Matthew and also just going to go for a single raider into a castle. So uh, not going to add in additional 
uh, raiders and just going to try to play a macro game from here. Consciously eating, going to try to do that uh, surround with the workers, not going to be able to get it. He's going to send his first ra uh, work wolf, excuse me, uh, to the other side of the map to do some scouting rather than trying to do defend. Good flash over here, going to get that worker. Uh, so that is risky if you don't have a flash, but if you do have a flash, that's totally fine. Going to get a worker for free. Very nice. I don't quite agree with this, though. This is a definitely risky because you don't have a flash you're not going to be able to uh you know survive it's a good it's a good scout but at the same time you need to do this a little bit later in my opinion there's no real reason for this to happen this early he is going to regenerate up to that 25 uh energy and going to be able to flash away eventually but i think that flash was a little bit risky at the same time consciously eating going to get a scout on into the main base of matthew and going to try to see that uh castle in the main back over there matthew and is going to be able to flash away so it ended up not being punished by consciously eating even though i feel like it could have this wolf probably is going to go down to a double flash of this raider if i had to guess is gonna miss that flash though that's a very sloppy unfortunate from matthew and here is gonna try to block it out okay so some good good micro over there gonna be able to get it either way so uh making up for his mistake a little bit earlier consciously eating gonna go for a quick third base off of just one house so this is about as greedy as you can get if you're playing this build and i do like this especially because uh you saw the castle timing you saw that uh, the additional raider was on the other side of the map gonna go for a quick third base is an excellent choice in my opinion uh matthew and looks like it's gonna gain uh gear up to do the same thing and we're going to go into a bit of a macro game. I feel like these wolves are kind of overstepping their boundaries here. Uh, the raiders should win this fight every single time. And yeah, it looks like consciously eating. Gonna, okay, never mind. He's going to try to re-engage. I don't quite agree with this. I feel like he's just going to lose all his wolves for free. Uh, especially with some uh, good ma micro from Matthew. And probably can flash to get some more wolves with that uh, healthy uh, raider. Is instead going to flash all of them and get two wolves. So very nice. We have a fortress on the way for consciously eating. And uh, we're going to go on from there. These wolves are going to be hounded down by these raiders. Uh, we have another wolf of consciously eating that just was split. That's a bit of a missed flash there, unable to get it. But uh, the additional raider is going to go across the map and uh, cut this off. We have a workshop on the way. Uh, for Matthew and gonna try to transition into a bit of mech and yeah like I was saying consciously eating overstepping his boundaries a little bit uh, taking a few too many wolf losses than he really needed to do so far five wolves going down along with that single worker in the early game as well okay so where are we gonna go from here I like that this wolf was able to sneak around and get confirmation of that third base so consciously eating knowing exactly what he's up against but he doesn't have the wolf count uh, to deal with these raiders a little bit of a missed flash here once again for Matthew and I feel like his flashes haven't been the best in this game they've been all right you know he's gotten some good pickoffs but I feel like he could have uh, done that a little bit more cleanly we have a fortress on the way for Matthew and as well uh, but consciously his fortress is about 80% done so looking a little bit uh quicker maybe not a little bit a lot quicker for sure these three wolves gonna uh, find a raider that is gonna be rallied into the main pack could pull away out of ce here and uh, we're gonna settle into a macro game and macro games generally will favor the player who is better uh like mechanically wise at least and uh, in this matchup i would say matthew and is slightly better but uh, consciously eating did get away with a pretty greedy opening more or less so i don't want to count him out just yet he is gonna lose a wolf here uh, a little bit unfortunate we have some more wolves coming in along with this three wolves around on the backside. so this might be able to shut down the raiders and push them back is gonna get one maybe two if he splits off his wolves properly no not quite only uh, a single wolf and i think that was just a a move then we have two dragon slayers coming in for consciously eating no real anti-air on the other side of the map we have some archers being produced but that is gonna be more or less it he's gonna be uh, matthew and is gonna be looking to get some dragon slayers of his own so that's probably what he's thinking in terms of anti-air uh 
But that's going to be a lot delayed compared to consciously eating. So he's, uh, he, CE is going to have a pretty big window where he has dragons and his opponent does not. Uh, we'll see if he's able to capitalize as these wolves just push back the raiders. Um, these raiders burned too many flashes, I feel like. And it uh, looks like they are going to be surrounded. Does not quite get that surround on that top raider. A little bit unfortunate. And once again, not the best split over here out of these wolves. So it looks like he's not going to get as much as he could have. He's going to get a, uh, another raider at the tail end of that it does lose a handful of wolves for in exchange but yeah, okay we have a dragon's layer just starting for matthew and we have two almost finished for consciously eating and this is going to be essentially his trump card He's going to look to do significant damage with these dragons. Uh, two dragons layers on the way for Matthew and as well. Uh, but that defender's advantage is also going to kick in. Uh, we have Consciously Eating taking a fourth base at the same time with his map control. But uh, Matthew and being very smart, very uh, wily here. He's going to flash down this cliff uh, to get a different angle to do a little bit of scouting. I think that's a great idea. Uh, going to circumvent these wolves in the front of Matthew N's base, so he's not going to be aware that uh, these uh, raiders are on the map. Uh, we have both players looking to go for upgrades as well. We have that animal testing lab here and the forge for Matthew N. So in this game, I feel like Consciously Eating has just been a little bit ahead overall. Um, with in the terms of macro, he's got his dragons faster. He has his upgrades coming in a little bit faster. His fourth base is also a little bit faster, uh, which is good. But that's sort of the thing you need if you're playing beast versus uh, rack. So I don't think it's like an insane advantage or anything like that. Um, and I think it's quite even. Uh, this dragon, these two dragons are going to start going across the map. Uh, no anti-air just yet, but it looks like uh, with the number of uh, archers that he has, Matthew, and he has nine archers, I think he should be able to buy enough time for these dragons to respawn. Consciously Eating going to try to take his fourth base while at the same time going to try to do a little bit of harassment at the back natural of Matthew, and these archers are going to respond. Um, yeah, and then... The, I think with the archer support, I feel like Matthew N would be in a good position. Especially once these dragons do come out. Uh, Consciously Eating doesn't want to fight those uh, archers straight up. That's a bit of a mistake. Gonna lose one dragon, it looks like, for free. That is definitely a moment of inintention there for Consciously Eating. Uh, was a little bit busy, looks like, trying to get his upgrades going or something like that, but uh, not ideal. These raiders also escape after delaying the third, fourth base quite considerably. Uh, is still uh, not constructing at the moment. We have a snake charmer on the way as well, as long as... Uh, as well as a advanced workshop. So it looks like maybe Matthew N is saying, I don't really want to have to go rely on dragon versus dragons. I'm going to go for some, uh, ooh, a little bit of friendly fire there. I'm going to go for some uh, just solid ballista anti-air. Uh, Clutch Leading is also going to see these dragons with his dragons. Uh, so very nice. A little bit of bleeding off of these wolves over here for Conscious Leading, not the sort of thing you want to do. And this is a pretty sizable army, especially with those catapults as support. And uh, what? how many units does Consciously Eating have? He has a grand total of six wolves. That is not enough to deal with this uh, Rax army here. Yes, he has a dragon advantage by two, which is not insignificant. But I don't think that's going to be quite enough. This tower is also in the back of his base, so it's not going to be able to defend his the front as much as he would like. Um, these wolves going to come in. So this really comes down to the number of wolves that uh, Constant Eating did bleed out a lot throughout this game. So 20 wolves going down so far, and uh, that is obviously not ideal. Going to try to do a little bit of friendly fire here. It does get a shot on a uh, on a soldier. Uh, we have these uh, dragons also coming in from the back to try to defend this push, and this push is looking extremely scary. Uh, we have the dragons going to try to target down all the anti-air and perhaps get a big... Uh, I guess, air advantage and go for it, but uh, I don't know. This is going to be really tough. Wolves coming in for the surround on the uh, the archers. Good job targeting fire or targeting down the archers to try to get that air advantage, but I think this fight is going a little bit too well for Matthew, and even with the tower on this high ground over here, uh, the catapult's untouched so far. Uh, Snake's trying to do the damage that it can. 
But this this base is under siege. I would have loved to see maybe even a handful of workers coming in uh, to repair the catapults potentially. Maybe even throw down some towers on this high ground so that it's a lot harder for consciously eating to engage into this. This is a bit of a engage. I don't know. This is going to be pretty risky. Yeah, the uh, this catapult's absolutely melting the snakes and uh, this wolf snake army not going to be able to do too much. Good target fire with the dragons trying to target down that weak dragon from consciously eating. Uh, his upgrades is not going to be enough to deal with this it looks like uh consciously eating on the ropes here not going to be able to uh be able to remax or regain an army as well as he would have liked there's more reinforcements coming in from matthew and as well not looking to take a fourth base just yet just gonna try to uh pedal to the metal here and absolutely destroy and i think he's doing a very good job of it um, this ballista is not being uh, mixed in with his army, so that's a little bit of a mistake. Perhaps he just wants to keep it at home to uh, defend any sort of uh, dragon counterattack. These dragons are going to get caught a little bit as well. Uh, this fourth base is going to be taken down at the same time. And that does mean that both of our players is going to be on four base situations. Um, yeah. A little bit of a surround attempt out of constantly eating, but I don't think this is enough wolves to deal with this uh, Rax army. And there's that worker that I mentioned previously, going to try to throw down a tower to really anchor in this position. And the issue with uh, this bait, like I was talking earlier about taking like multiple bases on different sides of the map on this map as beast, but uh, if this sort of thing happens where you're not able to take this base, then how are you going to take like the, the the corner bases as beast, right? You're going to lose circulation uh, if you even wanted to take that base. So yeah, these are uh, these dragons going to be caught as well with the archers and this ballista airship going to come in. He's going to also scout that Matthew N is taking his fourth base while his was destroyed. So things looking really good for Matthew N here. Uh, an attempt at a macro game consciously for consciously eating, falling a little bit flat on its face. Um, I think he had a pretty good start, but I think he was a little bit too sloppy with his uh, with his walls. He kind of lost them a little bit too much for free, and uh, he was a little bit sloppy with that and. That's that's gonna come back to bite. Uh, the good one thing that consciously eating does have going for him is the upgrades. He has plus two attack, and with plus, so it is gonna be a bit of an advantage for sure, which is pretty big. Uh, snakes, of course, they gain a lot of advantage from uh, that attack upgrade, especially with how fast they shoot. Uh, that zero point six seven attack speed gonna be huge. Matthew's force space is complete. Is gonna probably look to saturate that. And yeah, this chokehold, I don't think it's going away anytime soon. Consciously Eating needs to get a fourth base, and he needs to get it very soon. He's uh, going to be on the verge of mining out in the near future. Um, perhaps he tries to sneak a worker across, take a base in the corner or something like that. We have a bit of a dragon flyby on both sides of the map. Uh, some good target fire. GG is called, and Consciously Eating is going to tap out, giving Matthew N the 1-0 advantage in this game. Bam. All right, let's hop into game two. Game two was played on... Dun, 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 dun. On Xenos. So let's hop into that. And spawning in the top right-hand side of the map, down 01, it's consciously eating. And spawning in the bottom left, uh, with a good solid macro game, it's Matthew N. And these scores are flipped. There we go. All right. So what do we have here? We have another quick worker scout, it looks like, from Matthew. And he did that the last game and uh, was able to get all the information that he needed. Saw that quick castle. And I really like that uh, he's going to go for it in this game as well. So I think that is a great idea, saying I'm just going to be... Uh, more solid than you in the macro game. So as long as I don't die to anything cheesy, I should be fine. And uh, going to go for a little bit of a sacrifice in that early game economy for that information. Going to do a worker scout. Uh, we have, looks like, uh, not a castle first out of consciously eating this time. I do like that. This worker is going to, okay, I think that was trying to do a little bit of something cheeky cheeky. Is going to get scouted by that uh, worker of Matthew N. So consciously eating forced to pull that back. I think that would be very frustrating, especially if he did have something planned. Um, so good start out of Matthew N. so far. And we have the first building, consciously eating, throwing down a racks. 
And Matthew N, also a Rax. Okay. Very nice. Um, not quite sure what the idea of of what this worker is. He's going to scout it. And that looks very suspicious. Okay. If you're Matthew N and you see that worker being like here, that is extremely suspicious. That's, this is when you're like, okay, what are you up to? What were you trying to do with that worker? Because you don't do that just because, oh, no, I misrallied my worker or something like that. That was, I think that was specifically designed to be like, I want to try to sneak out onto the map without you noticing out of clutch leading. And Matthew and seeing that, uh, I don't know if he realizes that, but I think he should realize that something uh, is cooking in the brain of CE here. Uh, we have the, an archer to start with for CE. Okay, I'm gonna try to do the archer opening instead of the raider expand that most people do. Perhaps not as confident in his raider micro, um, or perhaps he's just saying, I just wanna play a little bit more defensively, a little bit more safe. I don't know, we'll have to find out. CE also going for a bird. This is obviously uh, in exchange for not having that scout for the raider. You tried, You need to get the scouting information in some way, shape, or form. And it looks like the bird is going to be the answer for consciously eating here. Uh, Matthew and going to look to take a natural base, it looks like. It's going to be a little bit more later than usual because of that worker scout. So, okay, he's just going to bring that back. I'm not sure if that was trying to take a base or if that was just a, a scout. I don't think it was a scout, but... That's just something interesting. We have a worker going to the top side of the map for CE. Uh, this looks like where he's going to hide his tech. What sort of tech is it going to be is the question. Uh, looks like it's not... Can't, I don't know. We'll see. We'll have to find out together. Maybe it's going to be a hidden base. That might be an idea. No, throws down a, a, a house. Okay. World's Den is probably on the menu. So that's going to be interesting. We're going to see if this is going to be able to get scouted by Matthew. And this is a very interesting location, uh, somewhere that you don't really think to look. So I don't think it is going to be able to uh, get scouted. But you, uh, but Matthew and here will be able to scout that there is no natural. So that already is going to be alarm bells, more or less. We have this bird coming in, going to get a full scout onto the base of Matthew N. And I do like this tower. I think this tower is very solid. You, you want to be extra safe um, after seeing the no natural, and I think that's a great idea. I think this is slightly misplaced. This is not going to cover all of that mineral line, um, but this is sort of the issue with uh, walling on this map. Generally, I think um, it's it's a little bit hard to wall on Xenos because of where the 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 natural or the natural gold mine is in relation to the ramp. Um, but yeah, I think it could be a little bit, uh, placed a little bit differently. Perhaps Raider's going to poke in a little bit. We have a workshop on the way for Matthew. And so I think he kind of suspects it's, uh, werewolves cause CE definitely known for his werewolves, um, as it is right now. And I think that is a pretty good read. This is a, uh, I guess a meta read for sure a little bit, but I do think it's a good read. So. Werewolves then on the way. Tower in the natural. Workshop on the way as well. Um, so it looks like Matthew N will be more or less prepared. Taking a little bit too much damage to my, for my liking on that raider. A little bit sloppy. Um, and we have a advanced workshop on the way as well. So that's going to be for that werewolf drop. So we'll see if Matthew N is able to deal with it. Uh, at the same time, we have these five archers going to push across the map. I think that's a pretty good idea. Just going to try to see what sort of damage that he can do. This raider is going to come into the main uncontested, going to get that scout off, uh, which is very nice. Isn't going to see that werewolves end because it is proxied, but does see that advanced workshop. Workers are going to have to be pulled. But at the same time, we do have this uh, five archer hit squad going to hit on the other side of the map. And once again, that's going to be out of the range of the watchtower. So they could potentially just park themselves right here behind uh, that mineral line and get some really nice shots. Uh, this worker is going to go down those five archers, of course. Uh, magic number four, two-shotting workers, so very nice. Uh, 
He's going to hold position here. A little bit of damage going to the house, which is a little bit sloppy. I would have preferred to see him do that a little bit towards the back here. Matthew unforced to pull the workers. Good target fight out of consciously eating. Going to get that worker. Uh, this raider going a little bit too far. Could have been breaked out. Okay, does get another worker. So, so far, a really good start for consciously eating. And he also has that second punch for the one-two punch. Um... This archer is going to get trapped a little bit. It's going to get picked off from the reinforcements. Very nice heads up play out of Matthew. And, um, and we have this catapult though. And that means that this aggression is more or less going to be over. Um, I think maybe he tries to snipe, snipe down another worker and then back off. But uh, yeah, maybe this that, that might be it. Uh, maybe, yeah, I think he's a little bit overstaying his welcome. Especially if Matthew N had been moving his catapults forward a little bit um, but unfortunately not quite the case we have an, uh, that drop coming in in the near future uh, Matthew and playing very def defensively with his catapults I'm not going to try to run away from uh, his watchtower a good target fire going to try to take down that archer indeed does so does lose an archer in exchange though um, and these raiders coming in to try to take down uh, and clean up the rest or the remainders of this army does need to pull that back and he's gonna lose it it looks like yeah good target fire gonna get another archer at the same time um so where when is this okay there we go this drop is gonna go across the map now it's gonna be a little bit late i feel like i feel like he could have done that a little bit earlier he's gonna wait for the second werewolf instead i think that's a pretty good decision uh two werewolves instead of just one and Matthew N is more or less pretty prepared, is getting that advanced workshop up, is going to go, oh, GG. Oh, no. I think Consciously Eating should have at least tried his drop, right? I think I think this is a little bit premature. Um, yes, it wasn't looking good for him. He was stuck on one base this entire time. His archer attack didn't do as much as he would have liked. But uh, it, is a, it is a league game. You definitely want to try to stick it out, especially if uh, you haven't actually shown your... You haven't even tried your uh, ace in the hole. Uh, so a little bit premature out of Consciously Eating. But... That is, it is what it is. Why do I have R here? That's a mistake. What am I doing? Um, sorry about that. And we have the results. It's going to be 2-0 win for Matthew. And let's take a look at what Alpha League is looking like right now. And that does mean Matthew N is going to face off against Avocado Lord in the semifinals in a best of five. So that's going to be uh, a really exciting game. Uh, hopefully you guys will be around to watch that. And uh, we're also waiting on Hydra versus Winter, Mr. Winter to see who faces off against Weird Rat in the semifinals as well. Um, so I hope you enjoyed and we'll see you next time.